Hello students, how are you today? Are you fine? I hope you are doing great. It's been a long time. I hope you are doing well. And today I came with another interesting topic that is curriculum and pedagogy. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about meaning and concept of curriculum and pedagogy, basics for curriculum and formulation or development, process of curriculum development, effective curriculum development, and evaluation of curriculum. These are all the few things which I'm going to talk about in today's lesson. I hope you are very excited to listen to me. Before we talk about all this, let me talk about what exactly a pedagogy is. I know that many of the students, okay, they always get confused about what is the difference between curriculum and syllabus and even pedagogy. Let me make it very clear, curriculum, when you talk about this curriculum, it talks about uh, the university syllabus. It means it is very broader sense. And when you talk about syllabus, it is very limited. So pedagogy is another important term and which means art of teaching. And let me talk about some of the definitions uh, which were given by some of the uh, dictionaries and even a great man in ELT. According to Oxford English Dictionary, it gave a definition for pedagogy that is the science of teaching. According to Alexander, in the year 1992, he defines pedagogy as teaching methods and people organization within a framework for educational practice. There are even other important persons who talked about and who gave a definition for pedagogy. Watkins and Martin Moore defined pedagogy is developments in our understanding of cognition and metacognition. Silman's model 1987 of pedagogical reasoning focuses on the process involved in teaching including the transformation of knowledge so that it can be taught. Conceptions of pedagogy held by academics have become more complex over time. Knowledge is more differentiated and more integrated. As I already told you that pedagogy is all about art of teaching. What are the things which involve in pedagogy? Teaches knowledge, beliefs and values. Teaches ideas, beliefs and values influence practice. Like this was the definition which was given by Fang in the year 1996. Planning, teaching, assessing and evaluating techniques which involve in pedagogy. It's all about the people, those who are well experienced, those who are very good at a subject, that particular subject and they share. And they need to be good at planning, teaching. Pedagogical concepts are interpreted in a subject specific manner. As you can see here, a framework for examining pedagogies. Teaches knowledge, beliefs and values that leads to pedagogical reasoning. And pedagogical reasoning leads to teacher's behavior. Have a look at this diagram which gives us a clear information about a framework for examining pedagogies. A teacher's knowledge, beliefs and values. Pedagogical reasoning leads to teacher's behavior and that leads to affordances. When you look at students' knowledge, beliefs and values and that also talks about even a student's behavior and both like will join affordances and that leads to actions and activities and finally that comes to learning outcomes. Curriculum is the crux of the whole educational process. Without curriculum, we cannot conceive any educational endeavor. The curriculum in a literal sense, a pathway towards a goal. Curriculum is actually what happens during a course, lecture, demonstrations, field visits, the work with a client and so on. Curriculum also means a written description of what happens. Curriculum is an important element of education. 
aims of education are reflected in the curriculum. In other words, curriculum is determined by the aims of life and society. The term curriculum has been derived from a Latin word carreg, which means a race course or a runway on which one runs to reach goal. This definition clearly makes us and it gives us a sense what exactly and importance of curriculum. If the teacher is the guide, the curriculum is the path. Curriculum is the total structure of ideas and activities. There are many people who gave definitions what exactly a curriculum is. So it's very important to talk about dictionary's definition. So dictionary meaning is a course especially the course of study in a university. As I already told you in the beginning, the difference between curriculum and syllabus. So, this definition gives us a clear understanding what exactly curriculum and how it is different from syllabus. According to Blount's Encyclopedia in the year 1969, curriculum is all the experiences of the students which has undertaken in the guidance of the school. There is one more important person who defined and who says about curriculum, Stenhouse. In the year 1980, he says, curriculum is all educational ideas must find expression in curricula before we can tell whatever they are, daydreams or contribution to practice. Many educational ideas are not found wanting because they cannot be found at all. One more important person defined curriculum, his name is Kerr. In the year 1968, he defines curriculum as all the learning activities which are planned and guided by the school, whether they are carried out in groups or individually inside and outside the school. According to Cunningham, curriculum is a tool in the hand of artist. Here artist means a teacher to mould his material in accordance with his ideas in the school. A curriculum is an attempt to communicate the essential principles and features of an art and educational proposal in such a form that it is open to critical scrutiny and capable of effective translation into practice. It's very important to talk about what exactly the concept of curriculum is. We define curriculum as a plan that provides learning opportunities for students. Since education is an orderly and deliberate effort, curriculum planning is essential. According to Purita P. Bilbo, the concept of the curriculum is dynamic as the changes that occurs in the society. In its narrow sense, Curriculum is viewed merely as a listing of subjects to thought in a school. In a broader sense, it refers to the total learning experiences of individuals, not only in schools, but also in society. Curriculum provides the students with guided experiences and planned learning environment and instruction. Curriculum anticipates the intended learning outcomes. To achieve these learning outcomes, the curriculum formulates uh, certain objectives. However, no teacher confines herself or himself exclusively to the stated objectives and aims of the curriculum as it limits the process, adequate freedom is necessary for a teacher to be creative. Thus, the curriculum and instruction are inseparable, but they are interrelated. Let me talk about the three facets of curriculum. These are very important in curriculum. Goals and purposes of education. Second one is process of curriculum. And a third one, evaluation of products. So all these three facets of curriculum would give us a clear understanding about curriculum. Curriculum includes courses of studies, methods of teaching extra and co-curricular activities in addition to the regular programs. So as you all know that these days many of the schools and colleges have started giving importance 
Apart from regular curriculum, they also given much importance for co-curricular and extracurricular activities. Like first and foremost thing, we need to understand the basic needs of curriculum, the social aspects, cultural factors. Next, individual talents, ideals, intellectual and morals, and religious and traditional. These are all very, very important and which makes us very clear the exact nature of a curriculum. Have a look at this diagram which will help you very clearly purpose which leads to goals and delivery student. When you look at these goals and there are two important things which I want you to understand objective and needs focusing. So it's very very important to have objectives behind this curriculum development and at the same time one has to understand the needs which we are focusing behind this curriculum development. And when you talk about this delivery student, that is, curriculum alignment is very, very important. What are the principles which are involved in curriculum construction? A curriculum can be successful only if certain principles are involved in its planning. Many educationalists have suggested the difficulty level interest and logical sequence as criteria to select the subject matter. As a minimum, a curriculum should provide a basis for planning a course. And here, Thaba, she suggests a seven-step model which is popularly used in the curriculum construction. Let me talk about one by one so that you can understand like what are the seven steps uh, which were given by Thaba. Step 1, diagnosis of needs. Step 2, that is formulation of objectives. What objectives should be taught? Third one, selection of content. What information or data will be taught and where will it come from? Step 4, organization of the content. How will the information be organized? Will it be a textbook or using the internet? Let's move on to step five, selection of learning experiences. What learning experiences are? Example like role play, cooperative, or team learning, lecture, and even there are many other things which we can talk about like group discussion, jam, that is just a minute session, and even others. And will the instructor incorporate into the subject thought? Step six, organization of learning experiences. How will these learning experiences be organized? And last but not least, that is step 7, that is determination of what to evaluate and of the ways and means of doing it. How will learning be assessed? There are three important orientations uh, are there in curriculum. First one is child-centered. Second one is society-centered. And a third one knowledge centered. See when you talk about this child centered it's very very important to have because when you talk about this curriculum you need to understand the needs of the child. The second important thing while doing this curriculum when you look into a society before you frame this curriculum it's very very important and so that even children will not feel difficult in understanding their syllabus. Knowledge centered and make sure that whatever the curriculum which you frame or design that will give them a knowledge. The curriculum development process includes the design, development, implementation and evaluation curricula. The curriculum development process also involves monitoring, evaluation, reviewing, design, development, and implementation. There are three important phases which we need to understand in curriculum. Let me talk about one by one so that you could understand easily. The first and foremost, 
phase is that is the development phase. Here I mean to say the development phase stands for that is planning and developing. How do you plan for curriculum and how do you develop it? The second important phase that is implementation phase. Here we would be looking at management and implementation. Like whatever you plan and whatever you develop and make sure that you would manage and implement. And a third that is evaluate phase. And this is very, very important because and we could understand our objective. Evaluation phase means assessment of teaching learning process. There are many things which have involved in curriculum committee. The first one is curriculum policy maker and developers. Second important one is curriculum administrators. Apart from these two and even school and college principals, communities, lawmaker, educational researchers and teacher educators, publishers and project directors. The first and foremost step which I wanted to talk to you that is planning. Planning to determine the need and purposes, identification and analysis of existing situation has to be done. Formulate the philosophy of educational program. Constitute a committee for curriculum preparation. Here I want you to understand four C's of curriculum planning. The first C stands for cooperative and in curriculum cooperative means programmed, prepared jointly by a group of persons will be less liable to error than one prepared by a single person. The second C stands for continuous. The preparation of a program is not a one shot operation. Provision should be made for its continuous revision. The third important one is comprehensive. All the program components must be defined with requisite precision. A fourth that is it's lost but not least but it's very important one is that is concrete. General and abstract consideration are not a sufficient basis for drawing up a constitute the essential structure of a relevant program. So these four C's are very important in curriculum planning. Decide the philosophy and policy of organization. And it is also very important in curriculum planning. And let me talk about this student recruitment involves. It's a type of educational program and methods of teaching and group involved and duration of the period. And these are all the very important things which I want you to take care. And whereas staff recruitment involves the other things like teaching, supervised clinical practice, teaching learning activities, selection of learning experience, theory and practice. That is the major difference between student recruitment which involves and whereas staff recruitment involves. Three important phases in curriculum development that is developmental phase. It means organization is sequencing of theory, practicals, supervised clinical practice, individual student rotation plan, preparation of teaching learning materials and audio visual aids, curriculum committee, reviews the program, identifies constraints, access needs of modification and formation of the other standing committee for management of the curriculum. <music> curriculum design is all about analysis of social needs. It's very important okay, whenever you talk about this curriculum and you need to understand even social needs otherwise it's really difficult even students and even for teachers. So we have to analyze the social needs first. The second important thing is translating the needs into course or general or learning or terminal objectives. And the third one splitting the objectives into specific objectives. And next grouping the specific objectives into subjects. Deriving the subjects from the above classification. 
Next, we have important point that is specifying objectives. Unitizing each subject matter. Specification of required time. Evaluation is very, very important for us and to understand and to see the progress. Evaluation describes how to assess the nature, impact and values of an activity through the systematic collection, analysis and interpretation of information with a view to making an informed decision. Evaluation involves three activities like outlining clear purposes, gathering evidences, judgment and evaluation is also part of development rather than from it. It is a process of assessment, certain specific characteristics of the program, individual or an institution described, this will serve as the basis for making an assessment about the individual program or the situation. It is a continuous process, helps in making decisions about student, teaching learning techniques, facilities, objectives to be realized. It helps in to clarify objectives and also to know the extent of objectives achieved. It leads to improvement of instruction and the teaching learning process motivates the student determine. And there are two important four points of view of evaluation. Curriculum evaluation is concerned with the measurement of the achievement of objectives. Uh, the second important fold is curriculum evaluation is the collection and use of information to make decisions about uh, the educational program. As you all know that there are many methods and techniques which involve in curriculum evaluation. Let me talk about one by one. The first and foremost thing is discussions. Discussion means all the well-educated and all the committee people, they sat together and they will discuss. The second one is experiments. And the third one, interviews. It may be an individual or group of people will sit together and they will interview. And the fourth one, opinions. And it is very important to take even opinions from different people. And the fifth one, observations. And we need to observe in curriculum evaluation. The next important thing is questionnaire. As you all know the importance of questionnaire in evaluation and we need to understand like what kind of questions do we need to frame. Schedules. This is also one of the important things and to organize. The next one is practical performance. The other important one is maintaining records. Instructional scheme of each subject to be completed in the semester. It needs planning the lessons as per the timetable, using the transactional strategies, using the appropriate media, providing the learning resources, promoting classroom learning experiences, and last, that is progressive testing. These are all very, very important in implementation of the curriculum. The first and foremost thing here, which I wanted to talk about, that is intracurricular evaluation. The next important one is teacher evaluation of students. It's very important, teacher has to understand even students. The next important one is, it is not only just teacher students evaluate, but it is also important student evaluation of teachers. Otherwise, there is no point that like just teacher all the time evaluation. So the next important thing is materials evaluation, like whatever the curriculum, like whatever the topics which we have prepared that needs to be evaluated. Next, verification of methods. What are the methods uh, like which we've been using? The next important one is evaluation of tests and examinations. And here I mean to say that what kind of tests and examinations which we've been doing. Next, checking the learning outcomes while on the field. The next important one is curriculum review or improvement, change or modification. Last but not least, that is system revision. This is also very, very important as you all know that because 
because the revision is very, very important. Otherwise, like there is no point to talk about all of the points. So, and these are all the few things, uh, few varieties of evaluation which involves uh, in curriculum. Have a look at this flow chart so that you can easily understand because uh, I talked about very clearly like what development phase talks about, the next implementation phase, the next evaluation phase. I have given very clearly like each and everything, learner, teacher and subject matter and environment and resource. The next important thing which I want you to understand, learning experiences. What are the learning experiences which takes place? Next, instruction methods and media. Next, evaluation program. If you look at this flow chart, it would be easy for you to understand like how these three phases play a crucial role in curriculum. In each and everywhere, revision is very, very important. Otherwise, like we can't see any uh, development and even we cannot update. And even if we have, uh, if we want to delete some outdated one, it's very, very important to revise a curriculum. So I'm here to answer like what is the need for curriculum revision? The first and foremost thing which I would like to emphasize that is to restructure the curriculum according to the needs of learner society. And is, as you all know that day by day, okay, as we've been living in our 21st century, learners needs are changing. So accordingly, like even we have to change the curriculum. The next important thing is to eliminate unnecessary units and teaching methods and contents. And you know very well about like when we talk about methods, and our forefathers studied under the grammar translation method and which was really horrible. But today, and we do have so many things like call and called and even communicative approach, learner centered. So it's very, very important to update even a teaching methods and contents. Next, to introduce the latest and update methods of teaching and content, new knowledge and practices. Next we have that is to add or delete number of clinical hours of instruction. So these are all the few important things and these are all the few important reasons behind need for curriculum revision. So far we talked about so many things about curriculum and pedagogy. I hope it was very clear to you and in this lesson I talked about what is the difference between curriculum, pedagogy and syllabus and I also talked about the concept of curriculum and apart from these I also talked about even evaluation of curriculum and even principles of curriculum. I hope you enjoyed the entire session. Thank you so much for listening to me. I am going to sign off. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care.